The Cattle Raid of Cooley While those unfamiliar with tales of Irish mythology might be raising an eyebrow at the innocuous title of this story, The Cattle Raid of Cooley is one of the most well-known epics of Ireland. Like much of Irish mythology and Celtic mythology, the tale has been fragmented, told and retold, altered and rewritten throughout history but I'll attempt to provide a coherent and straightforward summary of the story. Much of the tale revolves around the mythological hero, Cú Cullen. So if you are unfamiliar with the character, I suggest first viewing my separate video on him. To begin with, we look at the warrior queen Maeve, who ruled over the region of Connacht with her husband, the king. Maeve's father was the high king of all of Ireland, and he had previously married her off to King Connor, who ruled another region, Ulster. The High King had earned the title after killing Connor's father, the previous High King, and so the marriage was arranged as a form of reparation. Maeve bore Connor a son, but she later left him, causing the High King to marry off another one of his daughters to Connor, but Maeve killed her when her sister was pregnant although the child was born through a cesarean section. The High King later took control of the region of Connacht and placed Maeve in power there, although Maeve and the prior king became lovers and shared power together. At an assembly of kings later on, Connor waited behind as others left the assembly and watched Maeve as she bathed in the river. He then proceeded to overcome and violate her, causing the High King to go to war against the Kingdom of Ulster. Maeve's lover challenged Connor to a duel to the death, but unfortunately lost. The Ulster army proved to be too much of a match for the Connacht army, and so they were forced to retreat. During the retreat they were protected by a tribe of warriors, whose leader was made the new King of Connacht, with Maeve's consent. She agreed but not long after she began an affair with her chief bodyguard, which her husband found out about. He challenged the bodyguard to a duel, lost, and the bodyguard became the king alongside Maeve. The actual story of the cattle raid begins sometime later, when Maeve is arguing with her husband over their respective wealths, as Maeve insists that she be equally wealthy as her husband. They are close to equals, but her husband in fact owns one remarkably fertile white horned bull that outmatches Maeve's collection. To make matters worse, the bull was originally born into Maeve's herd of cattle, but it resented the fact that it was owned by a woman, and so it moved to her husband's herd. The only rival for this white horned bull was a brown bull owned by a cattle lord living in Ulster. Both of these bulls were in fact originally pig herders, serving the son of the Dagda, one of the gods of the Tuatha Dé Danann. The two pig herders got into a great argument that came to blows, and they transformed into a number of different forms during their fight. Finally, they transformed into two worms, but their fight was suddenly ended when they were swallowed by two cows, and later were born as these bulls. Maeve successfully negotiated an arrangement with the cattle lord to rent the bull for a year, but unfortunately her messengers got drunk while in Ulster, and one accidentally let slip that Maeve would have taken the bull by force if necessary. The cattle lord backed out of the deal, and Maeve was true to her messenger's word, as she rallied an army to march on Ulster and steal the bull. At this time, the men of Ulster were under the effects of a curse known as the Pangs of Ulster. The origin and effects of this curse differ depending on the version, but most commonly it comes from a goddess who placed it on the men of Ulster after a king forced her to run in a race while she was pregnant. The curse caused the Ulstermen to experience incapacitating childbirth pains for nine days whenever they were in a time of great need although it was also said to last much longer than that. With the soldiers of Ulster completely debilitated, Maeve saw the perfect opportunity to strike, but she of course was not counting on the presence of Cú Cullen. Since Cú Cullen had the blood of the gods within him, he was immune to the curse, and so he took it upon himself to defend Ulster, 
at the young age of 17. Rather than facing down Maeve's army in open combat, Cucullin launches a guerrilla war, separating soldiers from their groups and killing them one by one with a slingshot. Additionally, one-on-one -on -one duels were a common way of settling disputes during this time, and so Cucullin would invoke this right to stall the army. Although Maeve sent her best champions to defeat Cucullin during these duels, the teenager managed to best every one of them. Before one of these duels, however, Cucullin is approached by a beautiful young woman who claims to be the daughter of a king, and she offers her love to him. Cucullin refused her, causing her to reveal herself as the Morrigan, a goddess of fate, war, and death. As punishment for this slight, the Morrigan attacks Cucullin during his next duel, appearing as an eel to trip him, a wolf to cause a stampede of cattle towards him, and appearing as a cow at the front of the stampede. None of these actions cause Cucullin to lose the duel, and he injures the Morrigan in the process, breaking her ribs, breaking one of her legs, and blinding one of her eyes. Later, she appears to Cucullin again in the form of an old woman milking a cow, with her injuries still present. She gives Cucullin three drinks of milk, and Cucullin blessed her three times, causing her wounds to heal. The duels continued, although Maeve of course grew angry and broke the rules by sending several men against Cucullin at the same time. After one particularly rough fight, Cucullin is left greatly wounded, and is visited by his true father, the god, Lu. Lu places him under a deep sleep for three days while he heals his wounds. During his sleep, the boy troops of Ulster take up arms to defend their land and rush to attack Maeve's army. Unfortunately, they are all slaughtered in the process. When Cucullin wakes and learns of this, he undergoes a reestrad, or warp spasm, transforming him into a monstrous creature of immense strength and fury. He arrives at the army's encampment and massacres them, killing hundreds and building walls from the corpses. At this point, none of Maeve's soldiers are willing to face Cucullin in combat, and so she sends Cucullin's mentor and foster father, Fergus, who had defected to Connacht. Although Fergus is hesitant, he meets with Cucullin and convinces him to yield to him under the condition that Fergus will yield to Cucullin the next time they meet, no matter the situation. Fergus is praised by the army for causing Cucullin to flee, although he says he will not duel Cucullin again until the other men do so. Finally, Cucullin is forced to duel his boyhood friend, a draining fight that lasts for three days. Cucullin ultimately wins, however, slaying his friend. After this great duel, Cucullin took time to rest, during which Maeve's army finally managed to get a hold of the bull. Unfortunately, this is the time that the men of Ulster finally began to recover from their pangs. A full-blown battle takes place between Maeve's armies and the Ulstermen, with Cucullin originally sitting out but eventually rising to join. He met with Fergus, reminding him of their agreement, and so Fergus yielded the battle, taking his men with him. Maeve realized she would not win this battle, and so she began to retreat. Cucullin catches up with Maeve during her retreat, but decides to spare her life as he doesn't think it's right to kill a woman. Maeve returns home with the brown bull, who fights with the white-horned bull. Although the brown bull ends up killing the other, it is mortally wounded in the fight, and returns home before dying. Thus ends the tale of the cattle raid of Cooley. The story is certainly an odd one, as a queen ignites an entire war just because of a single cow, who ends up dying immediately afterwards anyways. While it's unlikely that the tale will be made into a feature film anytime soon, it's definitely an indicative story within Irish mythology. With gods and great heroes, ancient traditions and tremendous battles, it's little surprise that the Cattle Raid of Cooley is such a memorable part of Ireland's mythology.